At this point, I've lost count of how many sandbox, crafting, survival-based games I've seen enter early access over recent years. Each one has been infused with a basic loop of chopping trees, breaking rocks, gathering food, building a base, managing some type of hunger and thirst system in a chaotic, low-count, free-for-all multiplayer environment that tends to attract a very specific type of player. And while there is some innate progression where eventually you'll start breaking new rocks and cutting down new trees, you typically are doing the same thing at hour 3 as hour 30 as hour 300, until you break or your left mouse button does. I do not typically like this genre of game, which is a little awkward as if you followed me for some time then you'd know that my stance on survival based games is that they're poised to capture a lot of what made old school MMORPGs great before the way that we made games and played games changed, and I love me some MMORPGs. Now I preface this video with all of this because we're looking at Rend, a sandbox crafting survival based game now in early access. The only reason I went ahead and checked out this game in the first place is that this is a project of Frost Keep Studios, which was making headlines a couple years ago as this studio, while still small, houses many ex-Blizzard, ex-World of Warcraft developers looking to unlock the potential the genre has, as well as having picked up additional staff from other MMORPG-based companies. Now at this point, I have played quite a bit of Rent. I've put in an amount of hours per day into video games with this that I haven't done since I was a teenager. I went so far as to create my own private server for some of my friends and I, and I am incredibly optimistic for this game's future. However, footage-wise, it will be a bit lacking as the timing between the NDA and media embargo being lifted and this video really didn't leave me a lot of time to gather cool shots. But that's not too important anyway, as I want to talk about the broad strokes, the, the things that make Rend special or different. Not all of them are wholly unique, and I won't hit every specific feature found in the game, just the interesting ones, and how they mesh together to create a different experience, an experience you're not used to in a survival-based video game. First, and probably the most definitive feature, the game ends, and you can win. See, in Rend, you have this overarching long-term goal to capture a large amount of these blue spirits, and when you hit a threshold of them, you win. Numbers are always subject to change, but currently it sits at gathering 100,000 of them, and a game of Rend is estimated to last about a month, and that is around the length of time that they want it to last. On top of this, while I say you win, it's your faction that wins. When jumping into Rend, you choose to create a character from one of three different factions, and that essentially is your assigned team. You load into the game on a portion of the map adjacent to your team's base, and any spirits collected count for everyone. Furthermore, in order to unlock new tech to make new bows or make new tools or enable taming wild monsters or the ability to craft siege weapons, it requires a massive pooling of resources for faction-wide tech unlocks from everybody on that faction. On top of basic survival gameplay of just pooling resources and specializing specific people to get a base up and running, things like giving Jim the role of being the Fletcher and Pam the role of the Logger, as there are personal progression systems that will make Jim and Pam do those specific things better than anyone else, more efficiently and effectively and quicker, and that benefits everyone and will give you a better shot in the long run of winning. And having three factions that are pit against each other where only one can win solves this weird problem because you're going to be assigned a faction or you're going to assign yourself a faction and you now already have a team with you. A lot of people in a lot of games somehow have a hard time finding other people to play with and in these style of games there's generally a mega group or a clan that's so established that it basically just runs house and solo players always feel like outsiders. It can be really hard to get in and become a part of it all and they end up just like these freeform free-for-alls that generally devolve into trolling as people get bored because there's nothing really to do. Factions in Rend give structure and you get the feeling right away once you log on, even if you don't know anyone prior, that when you're in, you're in. You're on the team. What do we need? How can I help? You're playing a match, and as soon as people understand how the game works, most people get on board quickly and it fosters a rather tight-knit community out of necessity. And even if you decide to lone wolf it and purposely go against the game's design, there are some clever incentives and systems that will still cause you to contribute, maybe against your own wishes. Now, to further strengthen and test a faction's resolve, Rend introduces something they call the Reckoning. 
Now, those spirits that I mentioned earlier are stored in a tree in the center of your predetermined base, and sure, by default this is shielded and it's a safe zone against monsters, the enemy players can't attack you here, it's where the bulk of your crafting areas, your resource stockpiles, and any other assets that you have will likely exist. But a reckoning is an event that lasts for an entire hour. Each server tells you when and how many will occur throughout the week, generally it's one or two. During the reckoning, your shields are dropped completely. And for the first 15 minutes, monsters are spawned wave after wave that will try to attack you and break through your base and attack that tree, which when it gets attacked, you will lose spirits and that'll cause you to fall behind in the scoring to 100,000. These reckonings get stronger each time they occur and require your faction to get stronger to hold them back. And this plays out almost like a tower defense, a base defense style event, where proper building, use of traps, use of weapons, and having your faction online and ready to go is paramount, and if collecting the souls is your long-term goal, this would be your mid-term goal. Making sure you're prepared for the posted time of the reckoning feels quite a bit like guilds scheduled raid times in MMORPGs. To make the reckoning even more dangerous, after that 15 minutes of being attacked by monsters when your walls and your defenses may be destroyed, weapon and armor stockpiles depleted, your shields will still remain down for the rest of that hour, and the other factions can now choose if they want to attack. However, when they attack your tree, those spirits you lose can be taken and brought back to their tree. They can steal your spirits. It creates a very tense hour that dictates the flow of the days before and the days after, as preparation and repairs require quite a bit of coordination, as well as where you send manpower during this time. Do you try to rebuild before an attack is going to come? Do you set up a defense? Do you attack someone yourself? Do you use global chat to try to get a secondary factor? to team up with you to try to remove some of the souls from the third faction that's clearly ahead. Do they comply with that or do they double cross you? It's an awesome hour to play and plan for and global chat and everyone still trying to vie for the win makes it really intense. Now this moves into the next point where there is almost a flow to a match in Rent. To illustrate this a bit, this is a world map created by a player freelancer and nestled in each corner of this triangle is a faction base, with the iconic Golden Tree Yggdrasil right in the middle. Now each base is identical leading into the center Golden Tree area, and if we're going to talk about progressing as a faction, whether that's creating stronger walls and stronger weapons and researching new stuff and new stuff faster, the further out from your base that you get towards the tree, the better the materials, the harder the enemies, the more dangerous the environment and biomes themselves become. And the closer you are to the enemy faction and conflict and the further you are from your base, slowing down how long it takes to gather materials and bring them home to where they can be used. Add into this that there are also some secondary capture points or base defense points that factions can take and hold from others and these can provide items and buffs or players may construct forward bases with stockpiles of weapons and armor to make moving around the map more safe or easier to recover from if they die. But what you get is as the game progresses, it starts to morph, as where you need to be to fuel your base to strengthen your faction changes and gets closer and closer to the enemy, until really in the center point there, all three factions are in that same place. Conflict is inevitable, resources are more precious, and it begs for metagaming. As I mentioned previously, there is personal progression systems, and there are some hard choices to go along with that. There are classes that you can choose from for your player to get both active and passive abilities to change the way or the role that you play within your faction. There is proficiency gained in the actions that you do, so if you want to get better with a bow, then you need to use a bow very often. So setting yourself up through the stages of the game is very interesting, especially since conflict largely doesn't exist in the beginning, but is vital at the end. So in that setup, you really need to make sure that you have all the bases covered, that you see how the game flows out, because what if you just don't have people training combat skills and you just get outclassed when the game pushes you to conflict and you can't fight for those rarer materials? Maybe instead you try to go heavy economy and hope that you get there before the enemy can get there or use it or need it and hold it, not with skill, but with the better equipment made from those materials. Have you funneled crafting bows to a specific player who can now craft two higher quality bows with the same materials it takes for somebody to make one? Repeat that for the hundreds of different craftable and usable items. 
Now, the thing is, is it's a match. So at the end of it, did your strategy work? How can you improve it for the next match? It's addicting in a very weird way, which allows for just fumbling around in the game, but also meticulous planning, allowing guilds and clans, I think, to really flourish. The community of your faction gets so strong so quickly that even if you don't start off as a guild or a clan, you kind of become one as long as you're open to it. And this whole thing gives that old school private server vibe where you choose a server and it kind of becomes your home and you play matches with relatively the same group of guys against relatively the same group of guys, leading to rivalries, friendships, meta meta gaming. because you know Jim is just a Fletcher and he's not in combat, but what if he calls an audible this match and chooses the assassin class and trains and bows hard? Now, Jim Fox. The dynamic of being a match to be won versus other games just surviving just to continue existing in the game world until you get bored of it creates this low level sense of urgency in everything you do that builds and builds and builds, giving meaning to even menial tasks, although you may not see it that way until you've played through part or a full match to see how it all plays out. Currently, the game has a faction cap of 20 players concurrent on official servers, with private servers being able to bump that up a bit. I imagine they want that number a little bit higher, but maybe not that much higher. 20 concurrent ends up being anywhere between 80 to 100 regulars and a bunch of casual or weekend warriors. This smaller number helps foster that community and skirts around the bandwidth that I think people have in remembering or even just giving a damn about other people. But the drawback is, come reckoning, it can be awkward as realistically there are certain people you'd want online for that, but there are also going to be a lot of people prioritizing that time to play the game, and not everyone can get in, so even a population bump during reckoning might be a cool idea. But it's really interesting because you end up with like your day crew, your primetime crew, your night crew, etc. And it's really common right now for server specific discords to open up to communicate daily goals or tasks or jobs. It's just so weird in a good way the way that this game pushes you to think about playing it. Combine that with the power that private servers, special rules, different group sizes, mods, and the like will bring in, you have so much control not only over the type of community, but the game you decide to play for the month. No Night Cycle November, or Food Free February, or Reckonings Every Day, or Never. PvE only. We've also seen streamers or influencers basically lead a faction with their community only versus other communities to add this dynamic that private servers can really nail. And I'm just talking big picture here. I'm not mentioning the small stuff like not having a compass or a map and needing to use that golden tree in the sky as your point of reference in navigating or describing places to your faction, or that the areas immediately surrounding that golden tree change seasons based on time or the spirit realm, or the difference between night and day, or artifact weapons, or named monsters, or the caves and the underground. Suffice to say, just like a lot of these other style games, there is a ton to discover. So yeah, I guess this is lots of rambling. Bottom line, what makes Rend special is it gives purpose and structure to the survival genre, which generally has none, and forces and succeeds in creating a community. Another cool thing before I forget is ascension points. These are points you earn by just playing the game, as well as even more when you win. And these give you the ability to unlock small bonuses, currently there's nothing combat related, things like unique hairstyles or cosmetics, slight bonuses like plus 3% rocks harvested or plus 5 carry weight, small stuff that you wouldn't even notice if you had it or not, but these are things that would carry over between matches. So maybe a specific haircut only exists if you win or were able to accumulate 25 ascension points, and so it's a piece of prestige and honor and people are going to say hey how did i get that it's a small incentive and even though the system is new and not fleshed out the idea that there is carryover even slight between matches is very interesting even if the final iteration ends up only being cosmetic stuff however and i want to reiterate and i hate when other people do this where they talk really positive for 90 percent and then the 10 percent is like just shitting on the game what i do want to say is this is early access and the game definitely feels early access it can be clunky, it's unintuitive in parts, it doesn't teach you what the game actually is, the tutorial and wiki is non-existent currently, there is a lot of stuff in the game and it's easy to get overwhelmed because it doesn't make sense at first and very few places can really help you make sense of it, but you will if you give it time. 
It just needs that early access time for a truckload of polish, but Rend is rad based almost solely on its potential. And the core gameplay of Rend already exists in the game. It's not like you're playing a partial game. It's just a game with a lot of rough edges. I think Rend should be on a lot of veteran MORPG players radars. And because of its match style, even if you don't really want to mess with a janky game now, come check on it in three months and join a fresh server or five months. I mean, there are fresh servers going to be happening constantly. And if you're a fan of survival based games already and know the drill and how they are when they first get put into early access, this one's probably in better shape than others when they initially get released here. I recommend trying Rend for you guys because if nothing else, just to see a twist on a genre you like is really exciting. But that's going to do it for me. Until next time, this is Fever. Pulse.